Today we are dipping our toe into our creation with the Neon Rail 5 engine. Don't panic, I will be taking you along the whole journey. So by the end of this video, you will be able to create whatever you want with no 3D experience. Turning you into a 3D Unreal 5 wizard. So grab a cup of tea and enjoy the ride. So we will be using the Unreal 5 engine and it goes without saying, this platform is a bit of a beast. So we're going to start with the basics. I'm going to run you guys through the interface of the program, where things go. I'm going to try and simplify things for you as best as I can by helping you make a simple render, just like the one you've seen in the intro of this video. Of course, I will include all the 3D models below in the description. So if you want to follow along exactly like I am, you can. But if you want to twist things up and go solo with your own ideas, you're free to do so. All right, so when you open the Unreal Engine for the first time, you will be met with this pop-up. You're going to hit the game tab and open a new blank project. That's it. Don't mess with anything else. Okay, we're in. Let's pause for a second. This is the interface of Unreal. It looks like a lot, but we can cut it up into little pieces and you'll notice it's not that scary at all. You got the files down on the bottom where you'll fire in all your 3D models, music, or whatever else you want. You've got the 3D workspace in the middle. You've got all your object settings on the left and right. And lastly, your tools at the top. If you've been using other creative tools like let's say Premiere, Blender, or 3ds Max, this should all look pretty familiar. But there's still a lot more to unbox, so let's keep our lip. So on the bottom we have our content browser. Now here you will want to keep everything organized as best as possible. When your project gets a little more advanced in the future, you'll be glad that you've stashed everything away in folders. To create a new folder, right click and make a folder. Now I will say naming folders is a little odd as you can't add spaces. To do so, you'll just need to use an underscore. Strange, I know. Okay, open that bad boy up and right click and then let's add our very first 3D model of our soldier. All right, in the middle, that's your composition window. That's where everything's gonna be displayed and rendered. So let's click and drag our little guy into the 3D space. Now, if we select him, we can see on the right hand side, we have this long list of options. That's where we're going to tweak and adjust your model's location, rotation, scale, and materials. To navigate the viewport, right click and use WASD to move around your scene. Q&E allows you to move up and down, and the camera slider on the top right of your screen controls the camera sensitivity. This becomes useful when navigating type spaces. Control space bar will bring up your content browser. W, E, and R will switch between navigate, rotation, and scale. And lastly, F will snap your camera to whichever 3D object you have selected. There's so many shortcuts I know, but you will get the hang of them with practice, so don't give up. All right, so we have our character sitting in the 3D space. So now let's plan to add some more assets so that we can fill that world up to make some sick ass 3D renders. Now the goal of this is to create something overgrown, something that shows the passing of time. And I'm thinking of throwing in some ivy, a lot of 3D plants, and a lot of little mushrooms just to sell the scene. So the first thing that you want to do is zoom up to the top of that toolbar and create a master sequence. Then create a cinematic camera, add it into the sequencer by clicking and dragging from the toolbar on the right. That way we can adjust it so that it's facing our character. Now a little pro tip is to switch your mode from perspective to cinematic. That way we can access more features like these grids and aspect ratios. In the setting tab on the right, you will have a lot of camera settings to mess around with. For now, let's just switch the film back setting to digital DSLR. That way we can get a more realistic depth of field. Tweak your focal length and depth of field sliders until your character is in focus. There's a lot more that goes into cameras within Unreal and that video is coming very, very soon. But for now, let's just stick to the basics. Perfect, we've got our framing. Now let's go back to the top and open up the Quixel Bridge. Now the bridge is a library of super high quality assets that whenever you download them, they get added right into your content browser straight away. No 3D experience required. I am using the Medieval Village collection but you could dip your toes into whatever package you want. If you're confused, what we've just done is told our actor to sit on the floor. We've added some cameras into the room, rented some free props from the bridge, and now we're going to decorate our scene. Now comes the fun part. You have your character and scene set up. Now let's just take the time and start adding in those assets which you've created. If you want to add in a lot of grass and foliage, switch to the foliage tab at the top, click and drag your models into the box on the left, and start painting around your scene. Create a lot of variety with your plants by starting big, 
for marking your way down in the tiny little details. A pro tip is to add some stuff into the background of your scene, like textured walls or large objects. That way, they will be able to bounce light onto your scene, giving you a more realistic render. I should say, make sure you flip back and forth in your camera view on 3D display. That way, you can make sure everything is fitting into your frame nicely. Now, let's say you don't have the best hardware and adding in all these 3D models is lagging your system. Well, you can click the setting tab on the top right and switch the quality of your viewport display to whatever you like. Pretty handy, just make sure you adjust that when it comes to rendering. Okay, you've got your scene created and all your props set. Well, it's time to adjust our lighting. To keep things simple, we're just going to be adjusting our directional light. I like to enter my camera viewport, place the directional light into view, and just rotate that bad boy until I find a pleasant angle that complements my model. Everything is done and it's time to capture that image. Fly up to the top and select high res screenshot. This will take a screenshot of your viewport, so make sure your camera view is selected. Hit G to hide any objects that are in the scene that may be in the way. And make sure to save your file before doing this because the higher you bump up this slider, the higher the resolution of your image. You don't want to lose any work by your system crashing. If you've made it this far, well done. You've made it. That's it done. You've now created your very first 3D render with no 3D experience. If you can think you can handle some more advanced Unreal tips, I would recommend you check out this video here where I walk you through the entire pipeline for making cinematics from start to finish. That way you can apply whatever you've learned today into a more advanced project. So be sure to check that out while I make a more intermediate guide for Unreal. I shall see you there.